Today, we just have 102 days to the 2023 election. The Independent National Electoral Commission has commenced the display of preliminary register of voters for objection and claims. In the last three weeks, attention has been focused over the uncertainty around the candidature of those contesting for Senate, House of Reps, and State House of Assembly across the country, yet to be determined by the Federal High Court. As a result, no campaign going on without respect to legislative elections. In apparent response to the situation, Chief Judge of the Federal High Court set up a tax force to dispose of over 600 cases. We are beginning to see results as judgments have been delivered across the country. The question now is, what are the implications of the order given by con the L court to conduct election within 14 days? Also, despite the provisions of the Act, and political parties and candidates are denied of use of public facilities or instances, members of the opposition political party are attacked during rallies and otherwise. Uh, joining us now on the morning show as we examine this matters and even more as the immediate past INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner for Kwaibom State, Mike Guinea. Uh, welcome to the show. I mean, let's talk about the Akwabio case, for starters. You know, part of the myriads of other cases we've got. Uh, do you think we have time for, for that? Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep it succinct. Well, 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 very quickly, um, I think that um, the import of the 2022 Electoral Act is not yet fully appreciated, understood by politicians. And I think I'm on record, even on this channel, since on the 25th of February, 26th precisely, where I have been calling on politicians across the country to go and engage lawyers to understand what is contained in the Electoral Act. The Commission made a total of 81 proposals, 48 were accepted. And of course, uh, people have been saying that uh, when you want to hide certain things, we, we're not hiding anything anyway. If we put it in writing, many people will not read. That is why I'll be calling for that. So the point is that with respect to um, the judgment in uh, respect to the senator you mentioned, uh, it's very clear that um, a primary election that will be conducted on the 27th of May that will be concluded, report written, cannot be reopened on the, 16th, on the 6th or 9th or 10th of uh, June, which is what happened. And the question is who monitor what happened there. That is what section 115 intended to cure. That people cannot buy different forms. That is a violation of the law to buy different forms. But unfortunately, many people don't understand, including my colleague uh, in the commission, your boss, uh, our senior friend, uh, Mohamed Aruna, our Oceania in chief in INEC, you know, went ahead to be saying that um, myself, Falana, we misinterpreted the law. Whether he's not a lawyer, he's not a judge. The court of appeal has spoken on this matter. Maybe somebody wants to go to the Supreme Court, so let's wait for that and see what happens. But as far as we are concerned, the import of Section 84, Subsection 1, and Section 29 is that you must have a primary conducted monitor by INEC, then of course, must uh, emerge from that process and where you fail to do so. The consequence is in section 84, subsection 13. Even though you are asked to seek redress under section 14, uh, subsection 14 of the of section 84. So, and that's why I'm a bit concerned about some of the things that, um, some of the orders that have been given, but I think we'll come to that. But I think first and foremost, so that respect to that of um, Akwabiu and of course that of um, the, the gubernatorial um, uh, primary that on the 26th that they don't hold, which was public. I mean, I was, I was uh, with the commissioner of police, all the people were there, and the media were all there. Till 12 midnight, nothing happened. But by on the 27th, which is uh, on, on Friday, we got uh, breaking news that uh, one primary has been done. So who monitored it? We are yet to see the names of those who monitored that. So I think that that has been decided in the court. But I think that for some of the issues you've raised this morning, you've identified this morning, the attack on INEC facilities across the country, the display of voter register that they've also mentioned, the outcome of the Federal High Court, which is very important, we need to look at, and of course, the denial of uh, political parties of the use of uh, apparatus by virtue of Section 95 of the Act, you know, all of these are serious issues. But I think the starting point for me this morning for the Nigerian people is that hope is reborn in you. That no matter what is going on, whether people are, any officer have been attacked, I can tell you today that with this piece of legislation contained in this act, INEC processes and procedures 
that are robust, replicable, designed to deal with historical challenges of election service delivery in any case to ensure that the misfortune of elites in our country would no longer meet the misfortune of Nigerian people, these laws, the electoral, the procedure have secured that. And I think I will show, for example, what we mean by that. Many people don't know, Dr. Abati, that currently, when I say that hope is reborn in Nigeria, whether you are from northeast, northwest, south, south, southeast, anywhere you are, on the 25th of February, we are going to have election in this country. And power has been returned back to the polling unit. That is where election will be won and lost. But the entire process is going to that area. How many people know that, that INEC will track the entire process? I think you can put it online so that people can see one by tracking that everything that will happen from whether it's set Trump back, whatever the materials are going to be kept, everything is tracked. And that's what we demonstrated in Aqua Bomb State where people felt that we're using magic. Where are they using magic? Who oh, were deploying simple ICT technology. So you could see um, there is a tracking material that I've sent uh, which you could use to, to demonstrate that, not the cubicle now. But the point being made here is that from, yes, so you could see this is INEC office. Then you are going to see the, a team of people who will be tracking, for example, Aqua Ibon, where I, the last place I worked. The 31 local government were tracked from the office. And you are going to see a picture, myself and the tracking team, all of them gathered at, in the office that we designed for them, for each of the local government, such that the materials, what happened from that place to the pulling unit, everything is tracked. There is nothing anybody can do. So Nigerians, what you should be focusing on now is to take advantage of the current display or register by virtue of section 19 that require INEC, which is what INEC is doing right now. The whole idea is to have what we call a participatory process because democracy is a collective self-governance. Now is the opportunity for you to scrutinize the register. This is time to scrutinize the register in terms of names that were omitted, in terms of names that ought not to have been included in the local government, in the world level. Now you have opportunity to make those complaints now. Identify them. Make them available to INEC and make them public because we have seen by experience how politicians will go and register people who, ought, who don't live in those areas because by virtual section 12 of the act, you know, voter registration must be based on where you reside or where you work. That is the rule. So go and check. And that is why they are starting down, they started on the on Saturday, is going to the first phase at the world level, which is at the 8,809 words that you have in Nigeria, you call the RA, that process is ongoing. Avail yourself. No need to complain about what you found on the register. Today, any wrong, irregular registration of people is done by INEC official because the registration process now for our purpose of accountability, it is all the research that have been done so far were done by our own staff, that is staff of INEC, because you register with your personal email address. So it can be traced. Whoever has done something wrong can be traced. And that is why over 23 are going to be proceeded against by INEC on account of what have been found that they did. And so that accountability process is within INEC and is ongoing. Now, after the first seven days, at the level of the world, they will now proceed to, to display the register again. Also, you find it on the website. That is, that will be on the 19th to on the 25th of this month. This is the procedure that is already ongoing. Please go and check and find out, you know, whether your name is there, whether foreign names are there. That is the opportunity that you need to have to get that done at the moment. Two then, days. of course, the Two Federal days. High Court. Two okay. Days. We need to structure this conversation. Okay. Yes. So, please, if we can make the responses more concise. First, let me start with uh, 
Senator Gosuna Pavio. Mm. He has said he's going all the way to the Supreme Court, which is within his right to do so. And he raised a technical point in the uh, statement that he issued, that as a lawyer is duty bound to respect the ruling of the court. But in the appeal that was determined in favor of DIG Udum Epudum, he said he was not even joined as a party in that appeal. Whereas the court gave orders uh, that affect him as a person and also his political interest, just as a way of contextualizing that. Second, today is 100 days to the commencement of the elections on Saturday, February 25, 2023. And the uh, INEC chairman has issued a statement. Now, one of the issues we discussed with you previously on this program is about the beavers, the bimodal uh, Accreditation, uh, accreditation system. system. And also IREV, the yes. INEC results being portal. And in one paragraph there, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, said clearly that there's no going back on Beavers and IREC. Does that lead to rest? The anxieties expressed by some people that some people were determined to stop that. And then he talked about engagement with the political parties. Then he talked about the voters. Uh, register that had been displayed and how people should take advantage of that and state their claims and objections, if any. And then, of course, he expressed concern about violence. So I think it's a good thing on his part that 100 days to the election, he has put out uh, this statement. But what do you think in terms of the details in that statement by Professor Mahmoud Yakubu? Well, the, the, the statement is very apt. First, on the issue about beavers. Beavers will be used by mode accreditation and by mode process of collision. That is settled. Two, um, with respect to the attack on INEC facility across the country, that is evidence, as you could see, in all parts of the country. And I want to say this, that attack on INEC facility is an attack on democracy. It is tantamount to the shooting the hip of democracy. Because when you attack... INEC facility, the same Nigerians who are saying they are angry, the same Nigerians who are looking forward to elections, and the election management body saddled with that responsibility, the facilities that are put in place that cost millions or billions, you are destroying them, that is self abnegatory. That ought not to happen. Complete self abnegation. And so our appeal to Nigerians is that we cannot say that election is an opportunity to renew the journey of a country. But that process is again being attacked. That should not happen. Furthermore, with respect to that of uh, issue raised about the technical issue raised by the former senator, well, I mean, that should be left for the court to determine. All right? Court of Appeal has taken, uh, taken a posi position. It is for the Court of Appeal to determine. And so, for me, I don't have anything to say about that. The focus should be more about what Nigerians need to know about the 2023 elections. Now, there are going to be misinformation. That picture you are seeing, those are the team from Abuja. And we have this in, across the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, including the Federal Capital Territory, where 31 local government of Akwa Ibom was tracked. Those are the trackers from the office to the war to the pulling unit. I sit in my office without going anywhere. This was after the election, where I had a full, full, uh, group photograph with them. They have all the equipment. So all those who think that they can use violence to win election, you cannot. Look, Nigerians, I am aware that um, uh, by the, some, sometime this month, the PVCs of those who have registered will be ready. Please go and collect your PVC. Your office on election day is not any political party office. Your office is polling unit. The 176,846 polling unit. That is where you should be on election day. Go and get your PVC. Now, with respect to the outcome of the um, various federal high court over pre-election uh, outcome primary uh, issues. Look, First, we must thank um, 
arise and perhaps one or two other stations that also have uh, joined to flag up these issues. Let me make it very clear here. Uh, perhaps with the task force that was set up by the chief judge of the federal high court, maybe, may, just maybe, we may be able to know a number of candidates at the legislative level before 2023 elections. Now, but one of the things that has a trend, I mean, we've heard judgment from Zamfara, from other places across the Ogun state and other. We've been hearing about the court asking, giving order that the election should be conducted within 14 days. Now, let us be clear that our election is guided by statute, and that is the 2022 Electoral Act. It is not based on common law rights. Now, under the current act, I made it clear way back in June, in particular um, uh, on the 26th of February, when this thing was signing, that under the current act, political party in Nigeria, in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, do not have power to change a candidate that have emerged from a valid primary. I made that point very clear by virtue of section 33 of the act. Now, the only opportunity available for a political party created, established by the constitution, statutorily, are with respect to voluntary withdrawal or in the case of debt. Now, as we speak, with respect to voluntary withdrawal, that have ended since, since July, and that of right for the federal elections, and withdrawal for that of the national governorship and state of assembly ended since August. Now, the only window left is in the case of debt. That's the only way you can now have an election. And that's why Section 33 made a clear provi proviso to the effect that with respect to Section 31, voluntary withdrawal, 32, in the case of debt, that's the only way you can conduct what you call uh, election within 14 days. Now, the judgment that I've been given, uh, Dr. Abati, where I begin to wonder is that the courts are asking the question, what order at this stage can a federal high court give with respect to outcome or primary challenge in the court? This is the issue. The only order you can give is that when there is a wrongful return and the people are in court as with respect to that of the senatorial district of Akwaibon, you can say this was a wrongful return. This is that ought to have been returned. But where, for instance, in the in so many states across the country, including Akwaibon, now where perhaps primary was not done within the scheduled time, you cannot which provision of the act did the federal high court rely on to order for a fresh election within 14 days. It is unavailable. It is unavailing. Nowhere in the act that gives that power. Now, because you must be very careful here, because our practice, our election is based on legal framework. There are time, there's a period for withdrawal. That period, that window has passed. Now, if you now give an order for the conduct of a fresh primary, meanwhile, this matter is going to get up to Supreme Court. And assuming they are not going to Supreme Court, the question now is, you also have to comply with the provision of section 29, subsection 3, that requires you having to paste the particulars of that candidate again in the local government for people's of objection and claims, or people may likely to go to court to challenge whatever that has been disposed to in an affidavit. Quite clearly, you see, the power to give an order by a court is also, if you are uh, interpreting a, st a statute of the law, it is only that statute that cannot tell you the remedy that you can give. And the remedy has been provided under section 84, subsection 13, that where a political party fails to comply with the provision of the act, that party, that party will not be included in that election. And in any case, in the case of the APC for the coffee or so one of these uh, cases, the Supreme Court has made it very clear that a court of law cannot extend the period for primaries because period of primary had been fixed by virtue of section 28 of the act by the commission two days after the 2022 was signed into as an act so i find that quite very uh, strange but what is more worrisome as we go for this 23 election is the fact that people are yet to understand key stakeholders i mean last week we were here or two weeks ago we were here and we talked about what the ig is doing because that's one of the 
key agency for a successful election. And across the uh, command of the Federation, the Nigerian police, which is responsible for security of election, they are already doing training of all their personnel across the country. For example, if I left Akwaibon, as part of my contribution to this exercise, the NUJ chapter, all journalists in Akwaibon, I voluntarily agreed to have a training for them on every provision of the act. Recall that I have told people here that in this act, there are some provisions I will never mention. But the, the, I will never mention the provision because they are supposed to act as a shield to the electoral process and also act as a sword. At the appropriate time, I'm going to mention that. That will be after the election. But the message that should be taken away is that if we are planning to rig in 2023, Forget it. Because evidence of what you want to do, whereas you will not benefit from it, it will be so overwhelming that at the end of the day, you will have just messed up yourself. So if you believe that in your polling unit, in your world, in your local government, in your state, or in your region, you control anything, okay, okay. you are wasting your time. Okay. It's not going to happen. So let's Hope on. is reborn in Nigeria. So let's quickly juxtapose. I think I was just in all the papers that Mr. Kabio is indeed going to go to the Supreme Court. How it is, right. is that going to pan out, looking at the timeline you talked about? And secondly, a lot of Nigerians have complained. They don't trust this register. You know, since it's been put out there, they've been seeing a lot of discrepancies. How can INEC reassure Nigerians? The specifics of those uh, uh, discrepancies should be sent to INEC. I want to say here that how do, whereas, we, how do an average Nigerian watching on the screen send it to INEC? Sure, you go to INEC offices. You go to an echo. And that is why it is participatory. It is at the level of the 8,809 words. You go there. In fact, we expect that political parties, contesting parties, should be able to send their members to go and check whether within your ward, foreign people have names have been uh, added. You've got to check that. Then two, after that seven days, or uh, that is uh, on the 18th, they are going to move by on the 19th to the, to the local government level, that is 774 local government. At that level, these are three stages for Nigerians to check. It is participatory. Don't complain after INEC will publish the final register. This is the window given to you to do that. And so, go and avail yourself. But I think that what is worrisome to me, which is a matter of concern, is the fact that where are perhaps, I mean, you could see the judiciary also, um, they have set up a panel, and I'm worried about why, why the panel had to be set up so early and the uh, names already released. I am worried about that because of the capacity of the political elite in Nigeria to try to compromise, try to get everybody on their side to do what they want. I'm worried about that. But again, I'm a bit relieved when I saw a press release uh, to the fact that those names are not the real names. And we hope that should be so. But I think that it is important for people to understand the philosophy, the reason behind the proposals I make made to the National Assembly in order to understand it, because when a statute is not understood, misinterpretation becomes inevitable. Just as when a process is not understood, abuse becomes inevitable. So attack on INEC facility is worrisome. Mm. The fact that political parties, are, I mean, clearly from what we have seen now, mm. it will appear that all political parties now are now being attacked. I mean, yesterday, when the APC was attacked, I've been attacked, BDP, Labour Party, and all the parties. This is what is going on right now. Mm -hmm. This is what the political class want to do. Violence, misinformation, disinformation, let people know that their vote will not count. It's the strategy they want to use. But I want to say here that Nigerian people, stand up. This election is about yourself. It is you for make that decision. The process that have been designed are taking power to you. No matter what they do, hold your PVC. Your office on election day is the polling unit. Okay. That is where you should go to okay. and good. make do. It's good. You have your... worked with INEC and you are also a lawyer. I want to ask you a question which has been uh, out there with regard to the presidential candidate of the APC and allegations that was, uh, you know, uh, implicated in the case in the United States and all of that, with IMEX saying it never issued uh, any statement. But the question is, can INEC disqualify a candidate under the laws? 
Yes, let me restate my mission. I've been very clear that no consultancy with any politician, but my advocacy is for the Nigerian people, and I want to remain neutral. And that what I want to do is to educate Nigerians on the ABC of the Electoral Act, as well as process and procedure of INEC. So all issues that have become political, I don't want to join issue at all with that. The only thing I can tell you is that INEC don't have power under this law to take any decision in whatever form in respect to whatever happened or did not happen about the candidate. That is the whole essence of section 29, subsection 4, section 3, 4, and 5, that people can avail themselves. And that is why I also make recall that as we are going for this election, whatever information you get, try and confirm. People should try and confirm because politicians are out there trying to do anything. Because in this election, INEC, Arise Television, the Nigerian police will not be on the ballot. Judiciary will not be on the ballot. But interestingly, all the institutions I've mentioned, they will be on trial. Because when two people go to court, one who stole the property of the other one, but one thing that they can use the rules of court to undermine the process, it is the judge that is on trial. Because one of the parties knows the truth. It's only the judge that is on trial. And so for me, what I want to concern myself with is to educate Nigerians. I mean, basically, people have called. Why don't you come and do, uh, what do you call it, uh, consultancy? I said, no. Having been part of building this electoral process for 10 years, having been part of making part of the proposal you have in this electoral act, I want to say it work. Because the broad outline of the 21st century is very clear. It offers mm -hmm. opportunity for people who can work together work together, live together, okay, and so develop I, new ties that can buy them so together. So I Elections will be a period okay. where we should renew the journey of okay. Nigeria. Okay. There's anger in the land. Okay. There's anger in the land. Yes. We must be careful. We must deliver 2023. Okay. Nigerians must sing a new song. Okay. The misfortune of political elite who okay. act like disconnected cartel should not be okay. the misfortune of the Nigerian okay. people. Okay. Real quickly. That is my evangelical commitment okay, so to just, the Nigerian just people. Just to get it, INEC cannot disqualify a candidate. As we wrap up, where do people report cases of underage voters that are being registered heavily? You register, you, you first, as I've told you, all those registration officers who are staff of the commission, the registration can be traceable to them who did that registration. That's not by one. For accountability, all right? And you recall I did that in Akwa Ibom State. No, in so number, can, where can no, number two, number two, yes. Voting. You report, I just told you, you go to INEC office, you write a petition. I mean, the beauty, you could see that INEC processes are open for meaningful engagement and discussion. And that's why you have it even on the web website. This is the first time that you are having a registered so Does INEC have an email people can write petitions to? Oh, they have an e they have email. Okay. They have email. And they'll respond to the emails when you write Sure, they, they, will, they will have to respond. In fact, there's what they call a DEX officer in each of the world. To take up, in fact, the current display that's ongoing, you know, the way we've already done it before, is that there'll be a DEX officer. Because most of our people who are domiciled in the rural area do not have access to internet and all of that. So they can personally come there and make those reports. That report will take him to the, to the, to the um, EU, then EU to the Resident Etra Commissioner. This is the way okay, it is done. By way of information, yeah. INEC has said 23 of its officials yes. who were involved in cases of multiple registration and uh, falsification of the register, you know, have been identified for proper sanctioning. Uh, two, after the register was put together, over two million names were eliminated Correct. for reasons of multiple registration. Correct. And now INEC has published the register in the various uh, words across the 774 local governments Seven days. for claims and objections. objections. But as we begin to wrap up, I want you to comment on not, the, not just the attack on the INEC offices, which we've talked about at length, but violence being perpetrated by the politicians themselves. We have had reports from 
Asarawa, from Ebony, from Kaduna, from Borono State, or even as recently as yesterday, you know, there was some untidiness, uh, you know, uh, acts, uh, some untidy acts on the part of some persons who attended the flag off of the uh, APC campaign. Now, what do we do about this uh, threat of violence? Two, two issues, and quickly. First, Nigerians, here is the message you need to know. Under the current system of INEC, it doesn't matter if you have millions of people you claim you that have registered, unregistered. At the end of every election in each of the 176,846 polling unit, domicile in the 8,809 was of the 774 local government. A new register we emerged. In every polling unit, a new register we emerged. And that is why you now have the provision of section 51 that today accreditation, or rather the voting, is based on total number of accredited persons that is required to be sent under section 60, subsection 4 and 5 of the act, composed really, you all remember Dr. Abati, that previously, there was a, when we came in 2011, because we wanted to kill, we wanted to tame politicians who are the greatest threat to our democracy, we said we're doing separate accreditation. So that when we have done accreditation, all accreditation is, is recorded, all right, they will not do the period for voting. Now we have made the system. So now you cannot cheat. It's difficult for you to cheat. Now, with respect to the violence, it's unfortunate, Dr. Abati, that today people think that violence is what they want to use. Section 94 is very clear that public facilities that belong to either the state or the federal, belongs to the people of that state, belong to the people of Nigeria. And that irrespective of who is in opposition, all right, they must have access to it. Democracy is inconceivable without opposition. In fact, it represents the liberal idea of liberal democracy. To say that there should be no opposition is most unfortunate. Then the physical attack that is going on is most unfortunate. In England, in other parts of the world, when people conduct themselves this way and they are traceable to politicians, they are banned either from parliament or they are banned from politics. My recommendation is that the Nigerian police, I'm calling on the IG, that look, the good job you've done in the, about several states that you are currently building on right now, quick investigation, quick arraignment of all the people that have been identified to be attacking people across the country. Now is the time for you to quickly arrange them in public so that they can be prosecuted and actually taken immediately. I gave an example of, of Kenya in 2013 where a, a, a member of the parliament, a campaign manager, was arrested on the day of election because in Kenya on the election day, all the courts are in section. So that once you do anything with the evidence, with the proof of evidence, you are taken to court. The second day, the guy was convicted and was sentenced to three years imprisonment. That is what you've done. Nigeria cannot be in autarky of best practices around the world. I mean, you all know that for the unfortunate case of Robinson Crusoe, no man can be an island of himself. We must learn from what's happening in that place. It's of the world. We must learn to know that democracy cannot thrive in the soil of absolutism. Democrats cannot thrive in an environment of pervasive attitude of absolutism. Democracy itself is not a final product that you graft into a society. It's, a, it's, 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 it's only about principle and values. It's a dynamic process that grows with the growth and evolution of society. And no society Thank can you. rise above the value orientation Thank of its you. elite. And so when we embrace roadside values, bringing roadside values into the political mainstream, this is a danger that we are faced with. And I hope that this 2023 election, political class should be careful course. because they never fought, many of them never fought for democracy as to many who risk their life to have this democracy. On that note, we'd like to thank you very much, Mike Guinea, for your time and for your contributions. Thank you very much.